So Nishal, thank you for joining us today. It's great to uh, meet you and uh, really been reading about the story of how you've been building the company and so on. Uh, so a bit of a background about uh, how you started and what's your journey been. If you can start a little bit from there, uh, uh, that'd be great. Sure. Um, I started off as a software engineer and, uh, you know, um, I worked for about one and a half, two years in corporate. Um, and there, it was in Bangalore and then got an opportunity to work at uh, burp.com. This was back when uh, uh, that was like the first uh, restaurant review website in India. And um, uh, I worked there for one, one and a half years. The reason why I w wanted to work there was um, because back then in 2000, I think seven, eight, uh, nine, uh, there were not a lot of uh, 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 startups in India which were building for the consumer internet. It was still new. Consumer internet was not very known. But I always had this, um, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, a uh, pull towards uh, building something where uh, you build it and people are right away using it. Uh, so I was not much of a B2B guy where, you know, you don't know who's using it. You don't know who the clients are. That's a different team that's interfacing. Um, so this, I joined this and it was fun and I loved, loved uh, uh, building there. But in the, in, at the same time, I was also on my side uh, during the weekends and all trying to build something on my own. And uh, because I was a software developer, I could just, uh, you know, rapidly build uh, different small little apps. One of the app uh, happened to really take off. It went viral and uh, people started using it, which was my first startup. That was, it was back then called Just Unfollow. Uh, it was a simple app to follow and unfollow on Twitter. Uh, no one had built it back then. And uh, that uh, happened to be a way for people to grow on Twitter, where they could, you know, follow the right people and attract them to increase their uh, followers. And we quickly started scaling and uh, it started making me more money than my uh, job was paying me. So it was an easy decision that, you know, let's uh, let's quit because I was making more money in a month than I was making in a year at my job. So I think, uh, and VC funding or something was very new. This was, I'm talking about uh, 2010. Uh, so so I quit my job and I, I, did, I was doing it alone uh, for another six months. Then I realized that it was growing even faster. Uh, so, you know, got my uh, friend from my previous uh, company to uh, quit the job and join me. And slowly and slowly we bootstrapped, reached about a million dollars in revenue. We were some seven, eight people. Um, then realized then the funding scene had started in India. So realized, you know, uh, we could now also raise like external capital, raised around two and a half million dollars, uh, started growing it further. And uh, it reached about uh, 10, 15 million uh, users. Uh, globally, where uh, a large part of the users were from the US, about 40-50%. India was still uh, social networks, you know, this was a social media app. So social networks were still very new. Um, and around 2016 or 2017, what happened is all of these social networks, they started changing the rules of their platform. And they started saying, what are the things you could do and what are the things you could not do? And that started affecting our business. And I realized that uh, these social networks, when they were new, they wanted to attract everyone and uh, call the developers to build on them. And when it was time for them to make money, they would uh, cut us off because they wanted to make all the money. You know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, this is not new. Now they want to try to attract developers again. But these very companies are the ones which have uh, taken advantage of the fact that others built on top of them and they could control the ecosystem. So that led me to this new concept of blockchain that was emerging. And the best thing about the blockchain was even if uh, the founder of a blockchain came and told you, you can't do this, they can't stop you because it's decentralized. It's not in the control of even the ones who create it. And that's the beauty I, I thought uh, how the world should be, which is, um, you know, not under any one entity or two entities control. You look at the internet today, how many social networks, two, three, and they're then under control of those three companies. So I think uh, that's what attracted me towards uh, decentralization, blockchain and crypto. Then I started wondering, what do I build? Because I found this technology. So it was not like, you know, I found a problem. I found um, a, a problem was my own and I found the solution, which was blockchain, but I didn't know what people wanted. So I started researching and I started buying, uh, trying to buy crypto because I was interested. This was 2017 and Bitcoin prices were rising rapidly. And I tried a few of the exchanges in India to buy um, Bitcoin. And it, I think the first time it took me about a week to buy my first Bitcoin. And by that time, the prices had gone up. And then I realized the state of uh, crypto in India, which was, uh, you know, it's so slow and the products were not up to the mark. And I had used some international products and they were not up to the mark. Uh, compared to you know the international products, the Indian products were not there. So I said, 
why not just solve this um, and this while this was not completely decentralization because an exchange in india is still de- uh, still centralized but it was at least helping people get into the decentralized world that's how i launched uh, wazirx in uh, march 2018 and it's been three and a half years now uh, we are the largest uh, exchange in india we do more volumes than any exchange has ever done in the country before this um, uh, we started um, you know bootstrapped this business and grew it rapidly today we do about uh, 6 billion dollars in a month and we have over 10 million um, customers um, so yeah i think um, we've been able to really make a difference i've been uh, pushing for growth in this sector because i truly believe that this is where uh, you get freedom true online freedom is this and uh, yeah i think we're just starting and everyone's talking about crypto but uh look at the pure numbers so we have about 20 million people in india uh, on in crypto but the internet in india is 400 500 million people so less than 10% of the people 5% less than 5% of the people into crypto it's a large uh, number of people to still on board so i would say we are very early days so why did you why did you choose the name wazirx uh, i always uh, because all the crypto others is say the either as a word coin or bit or some finance ka nands whatever it has all these stuff but yours is very different you took uh, wazirx why did you choose that name how did you what is the etymology behind that yeah so i i do had that issue that everything was having either bet or coin or something or the other and the problem was it was just getting too uh, crowded and i wanted to make sure that a brand i build uh, stands up uh in the uh, minds of the people and then um you know i was just thinking so what are we building we are building a platform where uh, people are going to trade and uh, they are going to need something that is going to help them do that and that's where uh, um, you know i'm 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 a fan of chess i don't actively play it anymore but i used to before um so the queen piece in chess is like the most uh, powerful piece and uh, it can make any moves and uh, that is what uh, you know it's called wazir in uh, hindi so so that's where the name wazir came that we will build that wazir and the king is you the customer so nice. that's how and x was for you know exchange or you know, anything you can think of, just to add that x factor so it became wazir x how much time did it take for you to coin these words uh, i mean uh, come with the name was it easy for you this is uh, naming is a uh, you go to a beach and think and <laughs> no naming is a you know i think the most difficult exercise Uh, because you need to get it right, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, for me, it's uh, I think it took about two three weeks. Um, we we kept di- different names and we kept uh, thinking about it, and you know eventually this name stuck. Um, but yeah, it was a uh, everyone was involved, and uh, we constantly used to you know talk about different uh, names and then ha- try to have it in conversations uh, to see if it fits well. If there is recall, next day suddenly we ask uh, what names do you remember of those five. So those were the. It was fun, you know. Uh, but yeah, it took some time. What were the other interesting names that you had other than Wazir X? Uh, uh, don't ask me about it. <laughs> I, I don't remember them also. But uh, I, I, now when I think back, uh, they sound very juvenile. So <laughs> let's not talk about it. <laughs> uh, okay. The next question is. Um, um, see this basically the readers of this research as are the magazine are basically people in the rich list right and uh, when we meet them one of the fundamental problems uh, that the uh, that these entrepreneurs and the billionaires really have is they are not quite sure about the uh, uh, the asset class okay the bitcoin is one thing but even if we talk about the valuation of startups itself they're like oh that's too much how do you how can startups with uh, losses get so much valuation then uh, then we ask about okay okay now let's talk about bit correct cryptocurrencies right so that is quite a uh, i've seen that inertia in terms of understanding uh, the whole ecosystem and the investing process i'm sure uh, some of those yeah, younger smarter ones like dipturaki and all of invested i myself have invested in an nft startup uh, a couple of weeks back uh, so uh, so but i am i invested without having enough knowledge but for me to get knowledge is why why i invested in the startup right uh, so how do you how have you how do you tackle this uh, problem uh, in terms of you know uh, this understanding uh, understanding level of hnis and ultra hnis of course retail consumers i'm sure uh, it's a it's a great way to create wealth uh, i've even heard of interesting stats a lot of americans are quitting job because they've made enough money through crypto and so on i'm sure there is a lot of value addition there but this class 
uh, who are who's got significant wealth who could actually uh, contribute a lot to this decentralized vision uh, that you and the others in the ecosystem have how do you uh, what 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 are your thoughts on that uh, uh, is it evolving is it cha- has it changed uh, is it long way to go i would love to know hear more about more about that from you sure i, I think um, look in terms of understanding this uh, and you said it right that uh, if you if you look at the valuations of internet startups to someone from the offline world it just seems ridiculous and uh, it just seems wrong because uh, a lot of offline companies might be profitable today but a loss making internet startup has more uh, valuation yeah. and uh, that does, just does not fit your uh, regular thought process yeah. uh, but it's happening right and is that is that wrong uh, is uh, that not that. the right way uh no no i i i mean these are you know questions to ask and uh, the 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 answer to that is that uh, the difference between a uh, physical online uh, uh, company and an uh, online one versus a physical one is that the physical one is bound by the geographic location and there are only so many people around it that can access it maybe uh, in a city maybe a lakh people 10 lakh people around that area now suddenly you take it online the entire world can access it so let's forget about profits and everything for a while let's think about distribution because that is what makes or breaks a company now you suddenly have a company online which has distribution unlimited and it's 24 by 7 and uh, you don't have off days it always works why shouldn't it be valued and that's why these startups have won now take a step ahead which is uh, the financial world. now all of the finance that you see it's all offline it's bound by the geography your country you can't access financial products outside india when you are in india the same for any other country what happens when you put this finance truly fi- online what we are seeing right now is just a representative the fintech companies we talk about they're still bound by geography let's not forget that but with crypto what is happening is you have removed the geographic barrier to finance so that is where the crazy valuations are coming and uh, what happens now is you are going to have one global financial market and all of these products are built for that global financial market this is still early days but the that financial market is now worth 3 trillion dollars uh, with participation from 150 million people that's about 3% of the global internet of 4.73 billion but that's the distribution possible which is 4.73 billion people will be able to access one financial market someday which is crypto so now you have to think about the companies that are being built in that market what should the valuations be and that's why you're seeing valuations of uh, bitcoin being 1 trillion dollar of ethereum being 500 billion dollars and i'll tell you these are still very early valuations because the distribution potential of these companies is immense compared to anything that has been built in the financial world so that's that's where the value will come now it will take time to build these things right uh, who would have thought that you would have been able to survive a pandemic only because there was internet imagine before, uh, no one would have thought that you can survive using it so that the same thing and i believe uh, you know the vision that i see for uh, decentralization is some day a software developer anywhere in the world will be able to create an online financial bank in five minutes and the pieces that are needed for creating that bank is what the world is building today so all of the protocols all of the different things that you're seeing being built they're all lego pieces like those uh, pieces of that are needed for building financial products in the future uh, so that's where we are in this whole uh, um, journey um, and yeah i think you can't justify things uh, um, right now when they're being created when you look back you'll realize you know when a zomato ipos and it's serving the entire country when a paytm ipos you're realizing the kind of uh, potential they've had because they were online so yeah um, if you want to get in you're getting in with the objective that this is a new uh, uh, world being created people are calling it web 3.0 for a reason so if if web 1.0 uh, was all about static websites web 2.0 was about uh, uh, interactive websites web 3.0 is all about financial world uh, do you want to participate or not that's the question uh, i think that's nothing you i can't guarantee anyone anything but i think uh, i can guarantee that this is a better technology how does it evolve only time will tell yeah no my question is mainly on uh, you've been having conversations with a uh, lot of people you know maybe super rich and have you seen some kind of evolution in thought process 
of uh, absolutely people like the traditional family saying okay uh, who said 2 3 years back you know what are you doing and now hey it's it's interesting how do i get started here you know, have you had that transformational discussions any instances that you can share yeah many instances i don't want to name anyone but uh, no, from different parts and yeah, yeah. See, the thing is, uh, yeah i'll tell you why i'm asking this question most of the people who are reading this they would be having this question and i want them to uh, hear from you you know without any names of course in terms of some of the transformational journeys so that could be quite a uh, right. nice thing to hear yeah right see a lot of people what happens is some are attracted towards the tech so for them the first time you know uh, they hear about uh, a new technology like this where it's possible to transfer money from each one person to the other without having any bank in between that is uh, craziness for them and then they want to be involved uh, for some it's metrics now look at bitcoin uh, in the last 10 years no other asset class has beaten bitcoin in pure returns it's 10 years we are not talking about one year data because you you know it might be um, uh, a fluke but 10 year consistently being the top performing asset um, and beating every other asset class now that's something where you know for people who are data oriented that seems to be the one that uh, is working out well uh, then there are people who want to get validation so uh, these are the people who are now motivated because a tesla is investing square is investing um, a paypal has started mastercard visa are talking about it so there is this part of uh, people that i've come across where uh, they were not hesitant before but now then they call back saying hey i heard tesla is investing maybe i should get it so different people have different reasons to get in and i think today we are in a time where a lot of them have their uh, have got the reason why they should get in either technology or because uh, some you know company in their domain is investing or because they are hearing about the amazing returns that is giving so sort of crypto and then we have uh, people who are into art and they are hearing about nft and they want to get in so that's how uh, i think uh, but i've come across it's not one or two several of my friends um you know startup founders uh, people from uh, offline businesses with a lot of money to invest and having invested in traditional assets now they see this as an opportunity to be like you know early movers let's invest and uh, be there uh if the market grows this is going to be a good um, you know bet for them uh having said that i think this is still a high risk category so you know uh, i think you should uh, if you divide and you have that high risk category asset class as like 5 10% of the portfolio uh, only invest in that amount if you do not know what this is yeah so uh, i've been uh, i mean i've been an active angel investor so one of the things i tell when i meet these entrepreneurs uh till last year has been till the beginning of this uh, this year has been no uh, you allocate 10% of your money to startups you know you would be essentially contributing to nation building so that's something that i've been trying to push now what i try to tell them is look uh, you have to now allocate 5% to crypto you know uh, even if you're not looking at serious investing at least you can start speculating with you know 5% of investable cash to start on with i mean uh, yeah absolutely so it's an opportunity because one of the fundamental principle i'm reading this book called rational optimist where it says that you know uh, trade created governments right the first you had a trade and then government started forming because one fellow thought he can be the leader and he consolidated everyone right so it's a classic example of people moving away from government and taking us one step back to go back to trade uh, it, it's quite evolutionary from a human uh uh you know human progression race progression perspective as well uh so that's quite interesting and also uh, uh what what are your uh, favorite projects in the uh, the crypto world do you track anything any any coins or you know uh, anything that you track which you find very interesting so while i don't want to um, specifically um, recommend something but uh, here's the, the stat says that uh, at least in india and but it's mostly true globally which is a, a majority of the people who get into crypto for the first time they buy bitcoin mm-hmm. simply because it's the most known and uh, it's a limited supply uh, asset and it's uh, got the most i would say uh, backing from people around the world um, I- including el salvador for example now making it legal tender just gets more and more approval so that's like the f- uh, largest number of uh, 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 first timers investing is into bitcoin after that you have these uh, all these blockchain projects like ethereum there's uh, solana cardano uh, quite a few uh, which uh, get the next set of uh, you know people once they understand the ecosystem what crypto is and everything then they get into these and then you have protocols uh, or like defi protocols 
and then you have staking protocols and all those things uh, which get the other part of the investment um, uh, something interesting i've come across and um, you know uh, what i personally like is uh, which is probably very rare uh, is a token called push push uh, which is uh, building a decentralized notification system uh, which does not exist today on on the whole blockchain ecosystem so that's something very interesting is from india so uh, i think i personally like that project but otherwise yeah there are a lot there are 10000 plus cryptos out there so you know you need to re- really dig deep to understand which ones are the right ones uh, next question is from a regulation standpoint i mean everybody speaks about regulation and you know it's a very hot topic right uh, can you clear the air in terms of your understanding of what is happening uh, with the regulation uh, is it going to be a uh, is it going to be very certain in terms of there is going to be government support for crypto in india or is it uh, still kind of you know shaky what 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 will be your final word in terms of uh, the future you no know? that could be one interesting thing you know people are possibly hesitant thinking that i might as well invest money in some uh, fixed income uh, bonds uh, than you know uh, investing in somewhere where the regulation is kind of easy and not you know not clear although it's it is possibly clear Uh, but from your i would love to hear it from your mouth saying that look what is it certainly uh, how does it look uh, maybe one word in terms of uh, how is it going to be then you can possibly explain what 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 are your thoughts on that i think there'll eventually be regulation uh, there's no way around it so regulation so that's is the short I, answer no i agree because uh, regulation uh, it's only because of regulation that the indian stock markets did well only because of rera is it going to be the value creation in real estate is going to happen in india so regulation is important the only question is is it going to be uh, uh, I, I, let me put it this way is it okay will cryptocoin be uh, sorry will crypto be banned in india that is one <laughs> blanket question that almost everybody has you know that's one thing that you can one bullet you can say what it is going to be then you can possibly explain yeah yeah and i see the thing is uh, Uh, while well, I, I can tell you, uh, I don't think it'll be banned, but uh, ultimately, you know, you have to read the signals. And the good thing is, right now, the government is going more and more towards regulation. So I, I don't think a ban is on the cards anytime. Yeah. But uh, I, you know, no one can guarantee anything right now. Yeah. But uh, at least a country like India, I don't think it's going to happen. We are a tech nation, and we are not going to ban a technology. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are going to uh, promote and be behind it as a nation. I'm sure about that. Yeah, okay. Then I agree with you. You know, I kind of agree with you. If we do not, if we uh, regulation is important for the overall growth of the industry as such, uh, and it's important that the government support uh, a crypto and uh, uh, trading because it's uh, you know for overall, or else India will lose the race. You know, <laughs> it would be stupid if we do that. Yeah. yeah. See, and also the uh, stand has been changing. If you see yeah. till last year, the government never spoke about anything crypto, and this year our finance minister said that they'll take a calibrated approach towards uh, regulating crypto. Uh, yeah. In Pep, she said that, and uh, now we had uh, several uh, uh, different discussions. Uh, everyone wants to understand and uh, uh, talk to the industry. So all of these are signals and signs of um, you know going in the path of regulation. Uh, but it's it's a very complicated topic and it will take a long time before regulation comes in uh, lot like internet can you regulate internet how easy is it how difficult is it that's how uh, this is going to play out yeah and what are your thoughts on meme stocks and uh, sorry meme stocks the meme uh, coins uh, uh, <laughs> any any thoughts on that look uh, meme tokens are uh, sort of um, you know something that appeared in the last 2 years uh, really well um it's very hard to say is it a fad where people just want to have fun or is it going to become something serious but a lot of things have started as a joke and then they become serious um having said that i i really uh, would suggest that it's the highest of the highest risk right now to get into meme tokens so be really aware about uh, what you're getting into um but ultimately you don't know the internet is a funny place you know uh, anything can happen and um, only time will tell whether this will stand the test of time or not we'll have to wait and watch yeah and who's your uh, uh, one entrepreneur that you respect uh, the most in the country anybody that you consider a role model or somebody who would like to emulate in india look i think uh, i appreciate everyone who's built anything it's not that easy to you know uh, be where they are 
um, um, but I don't have any one name in mind when I think of portrait. But I think uh, on a global perspective, uh, I think I look up to quite a few. Uh, but recently, I've been reading about Richard Branson. What I like is the way he's been able to really scale himself. Not so much for the you know, I don't know the wealth. I don't care about that. But the way he's been able to, if you think about Virgin, like one side, there's uh, you know, it's such a variety of businesses. Built out, you know, first first generation entrepreneur. I think that's amazing. And then Elon Musk again, the variety of businesses, different uh, businesses. I think that is what has been exciting for me because I think I've seen all of us entrepreneurs can build one business and try to make it big. But when someone's scaling themselves, that's the ultimate goal. I think to scale yourself as an entrepreneur and succeed in every department. That's very interesting. I think. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, Elon Musk and someone like Gautam Adani who's built five one lakh crore companies in India. Uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's very interesting and also uh, you're very young you know uh, if i ask how old are you you are uh, in your early 30s i guess i'm guessing or even no, no. no i'm 25 25 okay i'm sorry younger than that 35 35 okay, okay 35. 35 so and uh, very young and uh, you built a very valuable business so far uh, what do you have uh, what are what are your aspirations of future i want to build build more companies or is your mission to get uh, uh, the wealth creators to believe in the decentralization story so more adoption comes in decentralization economy what is it that is driving you uh, every day see i think uh, my uh, mission has been to you know um, onboard as many people to the decentralized world as possible because i just uh, it's like if i was to go back in time 10 years ago i would just get everyone on the internet because i've seen progress because of that and i think that is what i see right now uh, with crypto and i want to get everyone into it um, uh, whether you buy it or not i don't care but i think you should be involved maybe work for it maybe uh, use the products but i want to onboard everyone and i think uh, uh, i don't know about companies because uh, the concept of companies is also diluting now with decentralization because you can build open source projects you don't need to have a company anymore uh, so a lot of things will change uh, in the next uh, few years but i think i want to make sure that i'm i'm, I'm building and be part of a large network that uh, rewards all of the participants instead of only rewarding the founders or you know the the gatekeepers of these networks because uh, these are open networks being built so i want to be part of a large open maybe the largest open network that uh, could exist on the internet uh, where every participant is rewarded i think uh, that's that's what i'm aiming for and uh, what are your thoughts on nfts in india uh, is it? Uh, 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 yeah. I think um, I'm a strong believer of NFTs. Uh, surprisingly, uh, my first company was all about uh, social media, and it was for influencers. And if you uh, see that era, influencers could build influence, but they could never monetize effectively. And suddenly, now what happens is you have NFTs, which is sort of like the first-class uh, business model for all of these influencers. You have influence; you can create your NFTs. Your fans and followers can buy it. And the other is NFT show ownership, digital ownership. Until now, we've always come to terms that everything, uh, every image should be free. Everyone should use it. Um, but I think now uh, there is going to be need for uniqueness. And uh, when I show a wallpaper, I want to say this is my wallpaper only. I own it. And I think uh, you know something as simple as that. That NFTs are making it possible. So um, very early days, but I think very interesting where this is headed in terms of the art world, the influencers, and ownership. Yeah, so I, I, I was selling Nishant, you know, when I met him, uh, one of the companies, they, the company I invested in, basically, they are uh, into uh, 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 high street sneakers, you know, uh, expensive sneakers, and, you know, you and users can, uh, customers can buy, uh, let's say, a sneaker worth 10,000, 15,000 US, you can be the part owner of the sneaker, and you get an NFT uh, for uh, to prove your ownership, and you can, you will have an avatar in the metaverse with uh, sun, Sun, sun disk, sun, the better was it, sun, sun disk, right? Uh, uh, I forgot the name of the company and you can actually, the avatar can wear this uh, digital version of the shoes and you know, they can be part of the metaverse and so on. So that brings me to the last two of the, uh, uh, one of the last two questions, which is basically uh, crypto exchange, NFT, metaverse, how does it all play together in shaping the world in next 10 years? So, see if I, uh, and it's a relevant question for you, when you think about net worth, you think about all the offline things that we own, 
you don't think about online and um, our network is all offline you know uh, properties bank accounts money and everything uh, but today our life is online we are spending more time on online than probably offline a lot of us so this uh, whole uh, crypto and metaverse and everything is taking our uh, wealth online and uh, in the future when you know probably you make your list you'll say that uh, this entrepreneur probably has 80 90% of the wealth online which is uh, you know crypto and uh, uh, lands on the metaverse characters and nfts and 20% of on offline which is their you know traditional wealth and i think eventually the new generations will not have uh, offline wealth at all because people are going to that whole uh, no ownership culture offline you see the new generation they don't want to hold lands and gold and all of those things uh, they want to be free because we are all mobile now we can be anywhere and work is going remote so um, i i see a future where uh, offline wealth will be diminished and online wealth will be how uh, you know you'll you'll make your list eventually that's amazing i think i'm very happy to spread this message to every entrepreneur and tell them look this is going to happen you start building your assets online you know i was talking to disha yeah. and told me that he bought a land worth 2 lakhs or something online i'm like what how do you <laughs> and, I, and i was telling it after i went to delhi and uh, met a few people in the rich district and told this is i met somebody and he said this that they all in they can't even imagine that such things exist you know that is the level of uh, uh, thought process so yeah so it's going to be interesting the other day i was talking to someone who uh, i think um, bought uh, land for 4000 rupees and it's worth 5 lakh now My online uh, so <laughs> yeah pe- people are also making a lot of money buying land it's like the land rush the real uh, the online land rush is happening right now. oh god god uh, do you have the real estate assets online <laughs> no i mean uh, i i see, i'm a tech guy see i'm not the whole investor uh, guy i don't get it uh, in terms of you know where to put the money and what uh, what i get is i can build companies and i want to focus on that but yeah i mean um, whoever manages it will look into it but i don't personally get into uh, mm-hmm. investment it will not let me see then what will happen is i'll buy something and i'll be after it you know is it going up or down i tried doing that so so i stay away uh, but otherwise i i i think i dip my toes and everything i tried just for the sake of it i do try it out okay great and what are your thoughts on uh, philanthropy so basically what warren buffett does is we start from cradle to heaven you know heaven is not the it was cradle to heaven cradle is the when somebody starts up a company then becomes a most valuable company which comes to horn india 500 then somebody creates wealth becomes a billionaire then it's philanthropy and sustains that's the whole track right now what are your thoughts on philanthropy and uh i think what you're doing in itself is a quite an impactful project in terms of getting more people in the centralized world and number two i'm a big believer of uh people creating wealth for themselves and crypto gives an opportunity for anybody uh at any level uh to find out good opportunity and exchanges such as yourself really facilitates in uh, very young people uh creating a lot of wealth at very young age. so i think it's a really great thing that you're doing and wealth creation is a fantastic thing according to me and uh from your perspective so in addition to all these things that you are doing implicitly uh as part of your routine work uh any thoughts on uh, philanthropy uh that uh, that has always been in your mind and how you can impact people more uh, directly yeah see i think uh, for me when i think about philanthropy i think uh, you know the biggest problem uh, anyone has and and uh, or, or all of the problems the solution is uh, money uh you know you you get money into the hands of people i think uh, uh, they'll solve their own problems instead of you know trying to solve it on our own. so i i i am tr- constantly trying to find out how do you solve that for you know everyone not just for a few people and i think uh, one of the things um, that's been resonating with me for a while and uh, i it's been getting even better now is the whole universal basic income which is uh, you know irrespective of what you do uh you know that end of the month you're going to get some money so that you can not have to worry about food and clothing and shelter maybe and just focus on uh, achieving things uh, out of fa- passion so i think uh, philanthropically i would say if i was to get into something i would get into how do you solve for universal basic income eventually um i'm not and i, I think uh, apart from that education because again you're empowering so i i look at it more as empowerment rather than just donate and uh, get it done because it gets over 
it's like that teach a man to fish and you know versus give them a fish i think uh, empowering people is the best way to be philanthropic and i'll always focus on that thing okay great uh, thank you very much uh, anishal great talking to you 